Hello, welcome to part 13 of 500 Physiotherapy MCQ series. In description box, we have given the simple explanation to each and every question and detailed explanation inside the Telegram channel. Now let's move to question number 241. When it is said that an elderly person has a broken hip, the usual injury is fraction of which of the following structure? Option A, acetabulum. Option B, neck of the femur. Option C, pubic crami. Option D, ischial tuberosity. And the answer is... Option B, neck of the femur. Now let's move to question number 242. Patella tendon bearing POP cast is applied in Option A, femoral fracture. Option B, patellar fracture. Option C, tibial fracture. Option D, medial malleolar fracture. And the answer is Option C, tibial fracture. Now let's move to question number 243. Which of the following has the poor prognosis of the nerve recovery? Option A. Axonotomesis. Option B. Conduction block. Option C. Demyelination. Option D. Neuroplexia. Option E. Neuroptemesis. And the answer is... Option E. Neurotemesis. Now let's move to question number 244. Inversion injury of the foot is associated with damage of all of the following except... Option A, lateral malleolus. Option B, base of the fifth metatarsal bone. Option C, sustainium tali. Option D, extensor digitorum brevis. And the answer is... Option D, extensor digitorum brevis. Now let's move to question number 245. Which of the following muscle is not getting arise from the common flexor origin? Option A, pronated teres. Option B, Pralbaris logus, option C, pronator quadratus, option D, flexor carpi ulnaris. And the answer is option B, palmaris longus. Now let's move to question number 246. Which is the difference between an unmyelinated nerve and a demyelinated nerve? Option A, the location of the sodium channels. Option B, the resting membrane potential. Option C, the way sodium potassium pump operates. Option D, the ions that are required. And the answer is... Option A, the location of the sodium channels. Now let's move to question number 247. Fracture of the surgical neck of the humerus cause damage to... Option A, axillary nerve. Option B, radial nerve. Option C, musculocutaneous nerve. Option D, ulnar nerve. And the answer is... Option A, axillary nerve. Now let's move to question number 248. The position commonly seen in posterior dislocation of the hip is... Option A, internal rotation, flexion and adduction. Option B, internal rotation, extension and adduction. Option C, external rotation, flexion and adduction. Option D, external rotation, extension and adduction. And the answer is... Option A, internal rotation, flexion and adduction. Now let's move to question number 249. In brachial plexopathy, the sensory nerve action potential... Option A would be affected as the lesion is distal to the dorsal root of the ganglion. Option B would not be affected as the lesion is distal to the dorsal root ganglion. Option C would be affected as the lesion is proximal to the dorsal root ganglion. Option D would not be affected as the lesion is proximal to the dorsal root ganglion. And the answer is... Option A would be affected as the lesion is distal to the dorsal root ganglion. Now let's move to question number 250. What type of neuropathy is usually seen on electrodiagnostic testing in diabetic neuropathy? Option A axonal sensory neuropathy. Option B demyelinating sensory motor neuropathy. Option C axonal and demyelinating sensory motor neuropathy. Option D axonal sensory motor neuropathy. And the answer is Option C, axonal and demyelinating sensory motor neuropathy. Now let's move to question number 251. In electrodiagnostic testing, the ideal minimal distance between the active and the reference electrode in sensory nerve study is Option A, 1 cm. Option B, 4 cm. Option C, 1 inch. Option D, 2 cm. 
and the answer is option B 4 cm now let's move to question number 252 Tosis result in the lesion of which nerve option A optic nerve option B oculomotor nerve option C cochlear nerve option D trigeminal nerve and the answer is option B oculomotor nerve now let's move to question number 253. The muscle inserted on the distal phalanx and is considered as powerful and chief gripping muscle. Option A. Flexor digitorum superficialis. Option B. Flexor digitorum profundus. Option C. Flexor pollicis longus. Option D. Pronator quadrantus. And the answer is Option D. Flexor digitorum profundus. Now let's move to question number 254. The common extensor origin muscle. Option A. Extensor carpi radialis. Option B. Extensor digitorum and extensor digiti minimi. Option C. Extensor carpi ulnaris. Option D. All of the above. And the answer is. Option D. All of the above. Now let's move to question number 255. The fora muscle which produce elbow flexion. Option A. Angonius. Option B. Brachioradialis. Option C. Extensor carpi radialis longus. Option D. Extensor carpi radialis brevis. And the answer is. Option B. Brachioradialis. Now let's move to question number 256. A fracture of which of the following bone is among the most troublesome and problematic of all the fractures? Option A. Tibia. Option B. Fibula. Option C. Petella. Option D. Femoral neck. And the answer is. Option D. Femoral neck. Now let's move to question number 257. Berner's gland is found in. Option A. Duodenum. Option B. Jejunum. Option C. Colon. Option D. Esophagus. And the answer is. Option A. Duodenum. Now let's move to question number 258. Which of the following bone is the most common site of compound fracture? Option A. Femur. Option B. Tibia. Option C. Fibula. Option D. Ilium. And the answer is. Option B. Tibia. Now let's move to question number 259. Which of the following skin color changes is most likely to sign of liver disease? Option A. Pallor. Option B. Jaundice. Option C. Cyanosis. Option D. Hyperpigmentation. And the answer is. Option B. Jaundice. Now let's move to question number 260. Which of the following factor is considered to be the primary risk factor for erythrosclerosis? Option A. Stress. Option B. Obesity. Option C. Cigarette smoking. Option D. Sedimentary lifestyle. And the answer is. Option C, cigarette smoking. So that's all for today. If you have any doubts, please comment in the comment box. I think you have learned something valuable today. See you in the next session. That's part 14. Thank you and bye bye.